Good afternoon, good afternoon, and welcome to Live at the Waterhole, everybody, with myself, Chad Hobson. I hope everybody is having a fantastic Wednesday afternoon. Just a reminder that the show is live and interactive, so please do send through your questions and comments using the hashtag WildEarth on X. You can join the conversation on our YouTube channel. Or if you would like to subscribe, you can do so on our website. Or you can download the Wild Earth app on any of the app stores. So it does seem like the weather has has changed now. Uh, I think the rain has finally gone and it's clear skies at least here in Johannesburg at the moment. So yeah, it does seem like the the rain has finally passed and now there's some bright sunshine. So I'm hoping that we will be able to get a little bit more activity with animals and let's have a look see now watch this watch the vultures feed here absolute feeding frenzy. <laughs> Every man for himself. Quite incredible how, I mean, they, they do feed the, the vultures here, yeah, all the leftovers from the, the kitchen and things like that. And literally, as soon as the guy throws the carcasses, everybody is all over it. And it's literally gone within a matter of seconds. Caitlin Boss is saying hello, Chad. Hello to you, Caitlin. You are one of the regular viewers, so thanks once again for watching. And so, I mean, here you often see the, it's like the whiteback vultures, the, the bigger vultures. Um, they're often the ones that get into the food first, and then the smaller vultures, the hooded vultures, they come in second. They are much smaller and their bills are, or their beaks are adapted to pick off the smaller little scraps from the carcasses. And they also don't just feed on the remains of carcasses and things. They'll often feed on any dung um, that might be left behind, any insects or anything like that. So, I mean, they can feed on literally anything. And because they are also a lot smaller compared to the others, they sort of do wait in line. But 
Lady Macbeth is saying feeding frenzy at the station. Absolutely. Definitely a feeding frenzy. Kelly, so you're saying if these vultures are wild, why are they being fed? It, isn't it unethical? So, Kelly, I mean, the, the thing is that all those scraps there from the kitchen pretty much would either go to waste or they'll just throw it in the dustbin. These are all definitely wild vultures. Um, I mean, it, it is also for tourism to bring in the vultures and for all the tourists and guests visiting there to see. But also, I mean, in and around different areas, if there's carcasses that, or say for instance, um, livestock that's been poisoned and vultures go and then feed on the, that livestock, they will actually then pass away or die. And so a lot of places are trying to do these little vulture restaurants where they try and keep those vultures within certain areas to try and keep them protected. I mean, all the vultures are on the vulnerable list. so. I mean, they're, they're trying to do everything to keep the species around because, I mean, if you think about it, without these vultures, there will literally be just dead carcasses around, rotting, and it, would, it wouldn't smell the greatest all over. So, I mean, they're doing great for these vultures and trying to keep them within certain areas. I hope that does make sense. Yeah, I was talking a little bit about the weather a little bit earlier. Why don't we have a quick look at the weather and see what's happening. It does seem like it is a little bit clearer um, throughout the country today. It seems like that cold front has moved off. And hopefully that is going to then bring the nicer weather into South Africa or into the different parts of South Africa that we have these water holes and hopefully there's going to be a little bit more activity. I know yesterday was a little bit quiet. But you know what, you get those days when you are out in the bush. Sometimes you see it all, sometimes you don't see too much. It's just the way the cookie crumbles. I mean, it is quite nice to be out in the bush after some rain because a lot of the territorial animals, lions, leopards, rhinos, things like that, are going to be out and about to resense mark their territory. So, I mean, the rain would have washed away their scent and they now have to go and remark their territory. So, you'll often find animals walking around quite a lot during the cooler times of the day after there's been some rain. So, hopefully, some of those animals territories are around the water holes and we're able to find some interesting things for everybody. <laughs> you're always going on about these lucky sandals of mine 
Thank you, Sam. Good afternoon, Chad, from sunny UK. Hope you have the lucky sandals on. Find us something exciting. I've got a feeling there's going to be something exciting at some point today. I think we are all in need of it. Lenny, when you're saying like a scene from the movie The Birds, I haven't actually watched the the movie The Birds. I'm not a hundred percent sure what you are talking about, but I can only imagine that this scene reminds you of that. Catherine, you're saying nice to finally have sun and no rain. I mean, you know what the the thing is, the rain was very very nice. I mean, everywhere needed it. But uh, it was getting a bit much. So I'm glad that there is some sunshine. And hopefully the rain was enough to soak into the soil to be able to get absorbed. And hopefully we will then have some nice fresh greenery around for all the animals to feed on. Amazing how the, that feeding frenzy, straight after the, the feeding frenzy, once everything's done, it almost just calms down quite a lot. Everybody seems to just now be resting. And there's a couple of hooded vultures that are still looking for any scraps that they might be able to feed on. Some vultures are taking off and maybe going to find a nice perch where they're able to then just digest what they've just eaten. So a couple of those marabou stalks have now also moved off. Oh, there's still one there in the center of the screen. Oh, I think that was quite a, an amazing start to the show, watching those vultures feed, a little feeding frenzy. But why don't we head over to Tembi Elephant Park and see what's happening. Welcome to Tembi, where we've got a female in Yala and then a couple of parlors in the background there. Also, it does seem like the sun is shining at Tembi. That area up in the northern Kuzulu Natal region does get extremely hot and also very, very humid. So, I can only imagine. Oh, there you can see some nice blue blue skies and hopefully with the heat that that's gonna 
attract some of the elephants and might come down to the water hole maybe a little bit later on when it does get hotter for them to come down and have a nice drink. Beautiful colors of the, the Impala. I'm sorry, the Nyala. You can see those beautiful white disruptive markings. And often, so I mean, I've spoken a couple of times about those disruptive markings, and they're there because often Nyalas are spending time in thicker areas, and so in thicker bush. And if a predator does see the Nyala, often what happens is that Nyala will stand completely still, and then all of a sudden, when it does start to run, because the branches and things like that look very similar to those stripes down the side of the Anyala, the animal almost gets a little bit disorientated, or the predator gets a little bit disorientated in where that Anyala might have run to, because it just almost sees like a blur with these white stripes going everywhere. And so that often gives them a better opportunity or chance to get away from the predator. <laughs> you see there's a <laughs> the Chengu shop I hope I've got that correct uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure what your comment does say but thank you very much for sending through your comments Oh, so I think for now, let's head over to Olifan's River and see what's happening there.
beautiful banks of the Olifant River. Olifant River. It does seem like it is very, very nice and full. Beautiful just to listen to the sounds of the river as it is flowing. Lady Macbeth is saying, uh, nice to see it so full. It is very, very nice to see it as full as it is now. I think a lot of the rivers all over the country are going to be pretty full. It does still seem like it is quite windy uh, along the banks of the Olifant River. Black colored barbet, it's all in there. Black colored, black colored, black colored, black colored. That's why I often uh, try and remember it. That was one of the, the things when I first started out in the bush. I thought, sure, how am I going to remember these bird calls? And there was one of the, the mentors that trained me, and he said, All you do is you You try and put a little saying to the call. So I mean, then I thought, well, how am I going to try? How am I, how am I going to remember the saying? But it's it's a lot easier to remember the saying, and then it, you can from the saying you can get the name of the bird. And that's how I've now I don't know all the birds. There's some hippos calling off in the, the background, but I do know quite a number of different calls and. Some of them just stick in your head, you just hear the bird and you, you know the call immediately. But others are here and then I think, okay, so that saying and then get to the bird. So it's just a little bit of a trick to try and remember the bird calls.
it was, it was also quite amazing just to sit and keep quiet and just take in the, the picture that we see currently. Beautiful flowing river, some hippos in the background, some birds calling. Yeah, well, while we are here at the Woolly Fence River, we do have a clip of some baboons, so why don't we play that clip and see what happens. <laughs> the baboons trying desperately to keep its eyes open. It is a baby baboon though. Big stretch. Lee Cranmer is saying, okay, now I want to go swimming. I think that's because of the nice flowing river. I wouldn't suggest swimming in the Olifant River. And even here, you can hear that there's lots and lots of hippo activity. It is quite incredible to see some nice baboons and some youngsters and you'll often find baboons will rest on the banks of rivers just because they they find nice big trees to roost in at night that's where they'll sleep and then as soon as the sun comes up in the morning or it starts to heat up they'll then come down and start to forage for the day It would be quite amazing to see those hippos, but I can only imagine they're in a bit of a shallower part of the water, of the river at the moment. It does seem like it is pretty deep all along where we are looking at the moment.
Uh, it has been beautiful to spend a little bit of time here along the banks of the uh, Olifants River. So why don't we head over to Tau Lodge and see what's happening there. Oh, beautiful, a nice big herd of kitties coming down towards town. Beautiful big male kudu there. It's always uh, very special to see a nice big bull with those spiraled horns. It's quite uh, special to see lots and lots of kudus together like this. And you do often get them in in herds. So it's quite a, a large herd all together. And I think the one on the left hand side there is probably the dominant male. As you can see he's a lot bigger compared to the other two. The other two are still quite young bulls. Lee, Grandma, are you asking, do you suppose that any time in our human evolution we could see in the dark like most other creatures? Lee, to be honest with you, this is obviously my honest opinion, I don't think so. Um, I just think, I mean, like not really all the animals can um, see in the dark. It's obviously the, mostly the nocturnal animals that will be able to see in the dark. But like impalas and kudus and wildebeest and things like that, they don't see very well at all um, within the dark. Obviously their eyes will adjust just like ours and I think because we... That male was looking at to see if that female might be ready to mate. But us being uh, diurnal, so active during the daytime and sleeping at night, I don't think there would have been a time where um, we would have been able to see in the dark. But you might have another opinion, other people might have their own opinion, that's just my personal opinion. Diane from the UK, good afternoon to you. Same beautiful scenery. Indeed, very, very beautiful. Nice to see Tau Lodge so full.
Starbuck, you're asking is there a purpose for Kudu spiral horns? So, I mean, there's no particular purpose. I have, I ever seen Kudus using their, their horns to break off branches and things like that to feed on, uh, to feed on the branches and that. But I don't think there's a specific reason why they, um, excuse me, why they do twirl. I think that's just how, how they are. I mean, I think it also would look pretty strange if they just were like straight up and no curves or anything like that. Just to make them unique and beautiful and to attract the females. Also got to be one of my favorite sounds in the bush, the kudu alarm call. If you do often watch Wild Earth and would have heard me at Juma saying that it's the antelope that I really trust with my whole heart. If I hear kudu's alarm call in the bush, I know for a, a fine fact that there, there will be a predator there, or they are currently looking at a predator. Whereas you find impalas and inyalas, like if they sniff some uh, predator or sniff something that resembles a predator, they'll start alarm calling. But the uh, kudus, they, I don't think I've ever followed up on kudus alarm calling and not found whatever it might be that they were alarm calling at. And yes, is this your, my last day at the waterhole? Uh, no, so Friday will be my last day at the waterhole, Diane. So you've still got me for, what's today? Wednesday. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. You don't have to get too sad just yet. Should be saying, uh, wow, it's, I've been working the past few days. Tower is super full now. It is, it's, it's crazy. And I'm just going to read the next comment from Lorraine. She's saying, was the water level topped up by the lodge or rainfall? Uh, Lorraine, it's been the rainfall that's filled up Tower Lodge here. Um, and I mean, it's pretty spectacular. From what it was to, to now is remarkable, the difference. And I would really love to to know the amount of rain that Madikwe did get over the last sort of 72 hours. Because it seems like it is a huge amount. I mean, if you look at the ground now, it's already dry, but the water hole has filled up significantly. Oh, so it seems like those kudus have moved off and there's not too much else happening here at Tau Lodge. Why don't we head over to Old Danyu and see what is happening. Beautiful giraffes. Oh man, I love when it's dramatic skies like this. This is definitely one of the waterholes that's grown on me over the past little while. 
just because of the the level of where it is and also the abundance of wildlife that often comes around. I mean, we've seen elephants, giraffes, warthogs, lots of different birds, lions have come here. There are lots of different species that come and the eye level of the with the water hole is something that I do also really enjoy. Looks like two young males and then one female. The female is the one that's just walked out of picture now. Just looking at the ossicones or the horns on top of their head. The males much, much thicker compared to the, the females. And in another way you can tell is the penis sheath, the penile covering between their legs. Lee Kramer, you're saying I appreciate your thoughts and input. Thank you. It's only my pleasure. The waters again. Soul loves nature. He's saying that that giraffe had lovely markings. It did indeed. Extremely beautiful markings. And every single giraffe, completely different. All those markings. And just like a, a zebra, their stripes is, or the stripes are basically their ID number or passport number. Completely different. Yeah, you might get some that are very similar. They will always be different.
Ah, let's head back over to Tau Lodge where we've got an ostrich. beautiful male ostrich often the, the male ostriches are a lot darker in color compared to the females females are almost a little bit gray in color maybe there's some more that might be around somewhere Lee's saying such an intriguing tail on that bird. It's uh, that white little tail. Ronald Taylor is saying, why do most humans get upset when you tell them that they are an animal also? <laughs> I'm not 100% sure why people shouldn't get upset. We, we are animals. Homo sapiens. I don't think uh, oh, I don't think I've really told anybody that we were animals or we are animals. Maybe I must test it out and I'll let you know. Seems like there is quite a lot of uh, food available around here for this ostrich. I think maybe after the rain there's quite a lot of uh, insects that are moving around. Grasshoppers, locusts, maybe some lizards, things like that. <laughs> Soul loves nature. This is uh, thanks for this comment. You're saying you grew up uh, with a wonderful fictional book as a child about an ostrich chick that was raised by geese called Oliver. We used to request that my par that your parents read it over and over again to you. Mm. 
you said the ostrich was called Oliver and the, the book was Cuckoo, Child for Cat Clarity. Keep a lookout for that. Moon Beamy Smith is saying perhaps people, or oh, perhaps because there are many definitions to being an animal, or perhaps they feel that lowers them somehow. There is uh, a lot of different definitions for being an animal. I mean, people that are a little bit crazy, sometimes people can call them an animal. So I do see maybe now, after that comment, why people might get a little bit upset. But it just depends on what sort of setting that you, you're saying that they are an animal in. Lee Cranmer is saying your spirit animal is a turtle. You like to think you have some of the turtle's good qualities. <laughs> Lee, I'd love to hear what sort of qualities you think that you do have just like a turtle. I do think being a, being a turtle would be pretty fantastic. Just roaming the ocean, following the current, trying to avoid any sharks of some sort. And then returning to the exact same beach that they were born at to go and lay their eggs. Pretty phenomenal. And a lot of uh, turtles, they do get taken at a very young age. Uh, sometimes ghost crabs, birds, things like that, even along the beach. The thing is, it's something quite ridiculous, like 1%, 2% of turtles make it to adulthood, which is pretty crazy. Some white-faced whistling ducks, as well as uh, red-knobbed coots. Beautiful little ducks.
the rain you're saying that the tile crocodiles must be enjoying the increased water level I think for sure they are definitely definitely enjoying the water level and I think also maybe now that there's a lot more water around it means that there's the food availability has now probably gone down a little bit because there's more water all those animals that were within a smaller section or puddle have now moved to different areas Moonbeam, me, Smith, you saying that they, they remind you of puffins, but taller and thinner. They do look uh, very similar to a puffin, for sure. Sandra Macy, you asking do both male and female whistling ducks look the same or look alike? So they they do look very very similar. Um, the only difference between the male and the female is that the um, the female is slightly larger than the male. So it is very tough to just say, okay, that's a female male, female male. I mean, the, the size difference isn't a, a drastic difference. Potsadi is saying you've never seen ducks in such a perfect row. Got all my ducks in a row, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Keeping myself entertained on this end. I mean, Baby Smith, you saying all those blue feet, they, they do look like they are blue from this angle here, also to me. It was very interesting. I don't think I've ever really looked at a white-faced whistling duck this closely before, to be honest. And we've got another crocodile. Quite a sizable crocodile, this one. Definitely not just going to be feeding on little fish. 
I'll try to look to feed on something a little bit bigger, more substantial. Almost looks like that crocodile is not swimming, it's walking. When they swim, they're a lot smoother in the water. Very strange, that. So there it was definitely swimming. Black winged stilts. Lorraine, you're saying do they migrate? The uh, white face whistling ducks, you'll find them all year round. Not to my knowledge that they do migrate. Just giving themselves a nice little bar.
definitely it uh, definitely is bath time for sure you can see they bathing and they cleaning themselves taking them taking all those uh, older feathers out keeping themselves in pristine condition It definitely also seems like there is it does seem like there's quite still quite a lot of food available to these birds yeah okay, but I think we've had quite a good time here at Tar Lodge. why don't we head over to Tembi Elephant Park and have a look what's happening there We've got a beautiful dazzle of zebras here at Tembi. Swishing their tails away. Only imagine to try and get rid of all those flies that might be buzzing around the bum. That is the softest spot where those flies do like to hang out. So the zebras are constantly trying to keep them away from there. And shame it's sometimes you see the the zebras and they've got no tail. Often when the males fight one another, I mean as much as they do often kick, they do also bite one another's tails off. And you sometimes see a zebra with a small little stumpy tail and it, the tail just wags. There's no hair or anything like that. Do you feel sorry for those zebras because they're going to get attacked by those flies. You'll often see them just kicking their foot down every now and then to try and get rid of them. Lorraine, you're saying that you lived in Durban for a spiel, but regret never going to visit Tembi. Tembi Elephant Park is a, a phenomenal reserve. Um, I spent quite some time there during 2015 and 2016 when I was studying at a training provider up there in Shishlui, about an hour and a half south from Tembi. And I actually did my for guys a level one assessment so my basically my assessment game drive to become a guide at Tembi would always be very special to me 
I mean, it is quite a dense reserve, just uh, the area, a lot of woodlands um, in that area. But a spectacular place for birding, as well as seeing the tuskers, the big elephants. The lion population is very good there also. A spectacular reserve. And they've also got quite a lot of hides. So where we are currently now, it's actually a hide. So you can go and park your car and walk down a walkway, probably 100 or 200 meters, and you can sit in the hide and have coffee and watch as the animals come down to drink. So like during the heat of the day, it's a beautiful spot to be. Just resting in the hides. Lots, often quite a lot of activity of elephants and things like that coming down. Cheetahs and other animals, you're saying these are such lovely prison ponies. They are indeed beautiful indeed. And I mean, there's don't really need an explanation to why they're spending time around this area. You can have a look how lush and green the grass is. I would also probably be spending time around this waterhole. It's actually also the amount of rain they had at Tembi must have also been quite quite a lot just by looking at this waterhole because it's also definitely risen substantially since the other day. Green back camera rock truck calling in the background. <laughs> Lorraine, you're saying that you make, I make it sound so fantastic. Now you're in the garden route, a long way away. You are indeed a very, very, very long way away from Tembi Elephant Park, but maybe if you ever do go back to Durban and visit some friends up there or something like that, it's definitely worth taking a weekend to go up and explore Tembi. You definitely will enjoy it. You do also, however, need a 4x4, so don't think you're going to be taking a Polo Vivo or anything along those lines to Tembi. There's a very, very sandy area, so you don't want to be getting stuck. Especially with the amount of elephants around, you don't want to get stuck. There's also another reserve up there, also phenomenal for birding called the Ndumu Game Reserve, not too far from Tembi, so I mean, you can stay either at Tembi or Ndumu, and you can do a day drive in either one on the one day, and then the next day go into the other. Very special, special place.
that one zebra is now taking time to just relax. You can see it's low down. Right in the sun, just sunbathing. Hmm. Those two zebras are really having a good time at the back. Rain, you're saying stunning stripy scene, so peaceful. It is a very nice little peaceful scene watching these beautiful zebras. That's why also Lorraine, it's nice to just keep quiet and just watch. I mean, got some beautiful zebras here. I've got a couple of different birds calling in the background. Nice to just sit back and relax, take in nature.
does seem like the wind is also starting to pick up a little bit here at TMB, but I mean it is a beautiful peaceful scene that we are witnessing here, but we do have a clip of some cormorants, so why don't we have a look at that clip, but we'll come straight back to TMB. <laughs> no worries, we will cue the clip now. <laughs> it's nice for a little bit of a change to see the comrades here at Stony Point, Betty's Bay. Looks like there's also a seal in the background. Oh, I see now. It looks like that seal is eating one of the comrades. Now it's behind. Yeah, you're throwing the seal. <laughs> I mean, throwing the, the comrade. That's quite crazy to see. Sure, that came out of nowhere. Sure, oh, that was uh, quite exciting. I thought we were just going to be watching some comrades and a seal in the background. But it does look like that seal caught one of the comrades and was unfortunately just playing with it, throwing it around. Well, that was quite intense. <laughs> Maggie you say those zebra's tails look like conductors in front of an orchestra, they do indeed. Going left and right, up and down, left and right, up and down, moving all over the show. Cheetahs and other animals, you're saying uh, your first AFRICAM seal. That's exciting, and what a way to introduce you to your first uh, AFRICAM seal. Throwing a cormorant around in the ocean. Maria D, good afternoon to you. Saying good afternoon to us all at Wild Earth. So everybody in the Wild Earth office is also saying good afternoon to you.
Is everybody also in the office? The they get to hear um, everything I do say, so they'll hear that I've said your comment. Oh, beautiful. We had those uh, ducks in a row now, or a little bit earlier at town. Now we've got the zebras in a row. Gary70 is saying uh, afternoon everybody. Hi Chad and the team. Good afternoon to you Gary. Thanks for tuning in to live at the waterhole. Maria D is saying that water looks is so beautiful. It looks like a mirror with the reflection of the zebras and nature. It is uh, is beautiful, and also with the the lilies that are growing in and amongst the the water. 
It is a, a beautiful little setting that we have here. John Miller is saying good Wednesday, Wild Earth and Chad. Good Wednesday to you. And it's exciting. There will be a live safari this afternoon. And also straight after this will be on safari. We'll have the recap of what's been happening on the ground in the different locations. And then straight after that we'll be into the sunset safari. So don't miss out. And I believe it is... Uh, sunny on Juma. Unfortunately it is raining at Amakala. But hopefully that rain will pass. Green back camera they're calling in the background. Choo 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 I do miss birding up in the, the Zululand region and spending time in the beautiful sand forests, seeing the Narina Trogon, Nyagard sunbirds, African broadbills, African wood owls, all those beautiful special birds up there.
thought that might have been a tortoise, but uh, definitely is not. Just a little bit of elephant droppings. Nadine, I'm not too sure what you had for breakfast today, but <laughs> Nadine was thinking that that uh, impala might have been hanging from one of these trees here. <laughs> Goodness gracious me. That would have been pretty insane because, I mean, a full impala hanging from a tree, 99.99% .99 chance of there being a leopard around. I wouldn't have said no to a little cat. Just a reminder to everybody that this is live and interactive, so please do keep your questions and comments coming through. You can send them through on uh, X using the hashtag Wild Earth, or you can join the conversation on our YouTube channel. If you would like to subscribe, you can do so on our website, or if you would like to then download the Wild Earth app can do so on any of the app stores. And the app is very handy to have on your phone, wherever you might be, you can tune in, so it is definitely something you should do. Maria, do you say, and I hope the rain the last couple of days filled up the dams at Juma? I'm sure the, the rain would have filled those dams up, I also do really hope so. But I'm sure in the sunset safari with Steve and James, you'll be able to have a look and see. I'm sure that I'll go to some of those water holes and show you. Mike, he's saying good afternoon from a soggy Bristol, UK. Are the tail movements involuntary or is the animal consciously making each movement as it seems a lot to be thinking about? <laughs> silly question, sorry. There's no such thing as a silly question, Mike. Thanks very much for your question. And I mean, I would say that it's, uh, I mean, like they've got to consciously think about swinging their tail because you think about it, it doesn't constantly swing all the time. I mean, even now looking at this impala, it's still, but if there is something there, then it will flick the tail. So it's not something that just um, involuntarily happens. They've consciously got to make that decision to wag the tail.
Yeah, well, we are coming up towards the end of the show, but we do have a uh, one last little clip that we'll play for you. I'm gonna take you to the Olifants River, where maybe we have a clip of a cat. We can. We saw those baboons a little bit earlier on on the clips. Maybe it was the same baboons that are like pulling at these lines. How cute is that? Lioness with her two cubs. Quite an amazing alarm call. So you now know why I was getting quite excited yesterday when those baboons started to alarm call um, around the tower lodge. Well, there was just one thing. But you can hear now exactly. You can hear exactly now why I didn't get too excited because of the only being one. Maybe that was a hippo jumping back into the water. Quite special to see, even though it wasn't live and happening right now, that was happening last night line is moving right under where that camera is. Becca Neves is saying amazing to see. Indeed, pretty special to see. Oh, we got some warthogs. And that one's enjoying a little scratch. Maybe we missed them having a bit of a wallow. The one at the back seems like it is a little bit darker compared to the rest of them. Maybe it was having a little wallow trying to cool off a little bit. <laughs> and you're saying goodbye Chad, thank you again for a great afternoon, glad I'm here for longer than you thought, blush blush. Don't worry, I will be around a little bit longer for you Diane.
Skip, you're saying that it's... Uh... Oh, good morning from Texas. Looks like a lovely morning at Tembi. It does look like a lovely morning at Tembi. Sun is shining, animals are out, the birds are out. All we need now is a nice big elephant bull coming down to the water to drink, just to end off the show. Wouldn't that be fabulous? Sandy Franklin, you're asking how many babies do cats usually have? So, I mean, lions, they were often between one and four. So, often they'll have three or four cubs, that's generally the amount. Um, but something like a leopard, leopards will mostly have two cubs, but in some cases they will have three. I do believe there's a leopard at Mala Mala where I used to work now, the Nkoveni female, and she's got three youngsters. Doing well for now. Um, and then cheetahs, cheetahs, they can have, I mean, up to six youngsters. I think the record for cheetah cubs is actually seven that I know of. Um, and I mean, there was actually seven cubs that were born on um, Pinda, in the, one of the southeastern corner of Pinda, which was quite special. But generally speaking, they'll have five or six. So all cats have different amount of youngsters. Where have our warthogs disappeared to? <laughs> they did, um, oh, there they are. I was going to say, I'm giving you a challenge to try and refine them, but it wasn't too difficult. Dogs are constantly feeding, literally non stop, just like a little bit of a lawn mower.
So we are coming up to the end of the show and just want to say thanks once again to everybody for sending through your questions and comments and interacting with me. I do hope everybody has enjoyed the show and learned something new. Please do stay tuned for On Safari next and then the live Sunset Safari after that. But for now everybody from me, thanks very much and goodbye. The sun is shining here at Juma Private Game Reserve. The dust is settling. And this is On Safari. Thank you.